Imagine a mechanic named George with a passion for fixing cars and making them run like new. He has just set up his dream garage and is eager to help cars run smoothly. But here is a twist. His garage is eating among a roll of others and it's making it hard for people to notice him. Just like Max needed a way to stand out among other garages, professionals like you on platforms like LinkedIn need to catch the eye of your potential clients and your employers. In this episode of the DFY Show, we are diving into the world of personal branding photography and why it's like your own garage site on LinkedIn. We would explore what personal branding photography is, why it matters, and how it's not just about pretty pictures. We will also discuss the differences between headshots and branding photo shoots. What type of shoot is right for you? and the key element to consider before and during the shoot. From mood boards to props and from studio setups to on-location shoot, I've got you covered. I will also walk you through how to make the most of the photos you've got so your personal brand presence can be 10 times better. So let's get started. Welcome to the DFY show where we empower entrepreneurs, professionals, and business owners with valuable resources to accelerate your growth and unlock your full potential. I'm your host, Damilola Fenishu Badmers, and in each episode, we will dive into the strategies, insights, and success stories that drive personal and business growth. Whether you're looking to level up your branding, master marketing techniques, or embrace entrepreneurship, the DFY Show is your one-stop destination for inspiration and knowledge. So grab your pen and papers and let's dive in. A big thank you to everyone that has been following the podcast so far. This is episode three of the DFY Show and I must say that it's been amazing. And so far we've been able to repurpose the content both as a newsletter on LinkedIn and also as a LinkedIn audio event. And I must tell you that it's been a very fantastic journey. And I want to say a big thank you again for you that have been following the podcast, I've been downloading, I've been sharing with friends. I say a big thank you. And I'm super excited that you were here on this journey with me because we all have a lot to learn from each other. So just like the intro said, we are talking about personal branding photography. When we hear the word personal branding photography, what do we mean? What is so special about branding photography? We all know that photographs and images are becoming very popular and a lot of people wouldn't even want to interact with you if you do not have an image or if they don't know who you are because everyone are very careful of being scammed. So what is personal branding photography to start with? Personal branding photography are photographs of you and your business. So that means that you can work with a photographer to create meaningful and solid photos that can connect with you and your clients. You can say that it's your visual voice. It is how your brand looks, how your brand feels, and how you speak to people. We can also say that personal branding photography creates professional photos that help you look more desirable in your field, meaning that how do you want to be seen? How do you want people to relate with your brand? You know, just like we have company brands that they take their images very seriously. They have photo shoots of how their office look like. People that sell products, they tend to take photographs of their product and they put on their personal website. So also individuals can actually have images that can really resonate with their audience and can interpret who they have without they having to say anything. So when we say, okay, what is personal branding photography? Some people tend to ask questions that what is the difference between a personal photography, personal branding photography and a headshot? Now the clearest distinction between headshots and personal branding photographs is the amount of subjects shown in the photos. Now, just like the name, a headshot is considered a photo of a person's head and shoulders. That means you don't get to see their legs, you don't get to see much of the hands, except if the person is folding his hands. But for personal branding photography, you tend to show more details, you tend to show your surrounding, you tend to show more photos of yourself. Now with the headshots, the subjects which can be you or someone else is usually looking directly at the camera in a formal pose. So that means you're more of the old professional person, and that one we can say sometimes can be like pat spots way of taking photos 
And but for personal branding photos, you are interacting with props, you're playing with items. You tend to use more natural way of taking pictures rather than being strict with just one pose. Headshots are generally shot against a plain background in order to show or reveal more of the subject. While for personal branding photo shoots, you tend to place more importance on your environment. That's why people prefer to do location shoots rather than studio shoots for personal branding photographs. So why then should you consider having a branding shirt? I would say that number one reason why you should consider having a branding shirt is that branding shirts ensures you have a high set of quality images that are consistent and that they align with your brand style and messages across all platforms. So that means that images that you use on Instagram can also be used on Facebook, can also be used on LinkedIn. Using our introductory example with Max as a case study, Max, who is a mechanic, can use images that displays OES as a mechanic and also other things that it does. And these images can help him to create a consistent visuals that he can use for different platforms that he works with. We can also say that reasons why you should consider having a branding shirt is that it shows professionalism. Now, high quality visuals can convey professionalism and build trust with your audience, which also makes you more appealing to your potential customers. So people can know that, okay, you are a professional and they will want to be drawn to working with you. We can also say that one of, another reason why you should have a branding shirt is because of storytelling. Your branding shoots allow you to visually tell your brand story, values, and mission. It also helps customers to connect with your brand on a deeper level. We can also say that with a variety of images from the shoot, you can create content for social media, your website, your marketing materials, and of course, save time and effort in the long run. I know of someone that says that I don't have that time to start taking pictures every day. And I recommended having a personal branding shoot because when you just dedicate a whole day to take a lot of pictures and then you have close to 70 images or 50 images to work with for, let's say, a quarter, those images are sufficient enough for you to keep using over and over again when it's time for you to rapidly create content or social media or just say something that your audience wants to hear. Another reason why you should consider personal brand shirts is that it helps you to be recognized because strong visuals from a personal brand shirt can help your brand stand out and become more recognizable. For me on LinkedIn, I tend to use a lot of my pictures and I tend to do a lot of personal brand shirts and these things really help me. I remember when I was writing, after I wrote my book and I was about to promote it, how LinkedIn works, I decided to do a brand new shirt and I decided to even go a different way by not taking the photos in a studio. I used the lifestyle kind of uh, mode for the photos and they came out lovely and people were able to interact with the background. People were able to enjoy that particular picture because there were a whole lot of things to be seen and it was different you know it was different from the traditional way of you just taking your photo in the studio and i think that itself made me to sell more of the copies of my book so now that we know the benefits of branding shirts what are the types now personal branding shirts come in different varieties and because people have different businesses that they do what works for mr a can be different from what works for mr b so we need to know what kind of branding shirt do we have so that you can know the one that really resonates with you and also your target audience. So number one, I would say is essential headshots. Not only are headshots easy to create, but they also stand as some of the most crucial branding visuals because you tend to use your headshot for your LinkedIn profile. You tend to use it for your speaking engagement. You tend to use it for your email signature. You tend to use it for a whole lot of things. So that headshirt is a critical part of your branding visuals. Another one, which is my favorite, is lifestyle portrait photography. Now, like I mentioned, I used the lifestyle for my book launch and it was beautiful. 
Lifestyle photos empower you to authentically show yourself and it also helps you to craft something unique. Aside from you, they are seeing, they are seeing other things like your props, what you're using for the shoot. And it just sort of make the entire picture company look really interesting. And they are perfect for profile pictures, they are perfect for get to know me posts. And also the visuals can be used for products like your ebooks, downloadable guides, and also your online course. We also have another that is the behind the scene or at work photographs. So now these images grant insight into your process. It takes people on the journey. Max, who is the mechanic guy, can show people his tools, how he gets to working on cars, how he gets to talk with customers. So people can just have that feel of what it feels like working with Max. So these images, aside from the fact that it takes you into the process, your viewers also tend to enjoy the behind the scene because these images shows the behind the scene photos that include shots of you finding inspiration for maybe a new at work if you are an artist, if you're a professional, it sort of shows how you're working on your computer. Also, those images can be ideal for your website or professional materials where a more detailed look on your method is desired. Another one you can work with are promotional and advertising shots. We've seen people that sell creams, that sell hats, taking pictures of what they do and then posting it as a promotional shot, maybe as an Instagram ad or as a Facebook ad. This is something very interesting and it's a very important style of advertising because people can see what you do and what you even tend to offer them and they can get to make a decision on whether they are going to buy from you or not. Another aspect of personal branded photography are the tools of the trade. Now, this tool of the trade means that you take the opportunity to display the tools that you get to work with. So using the mechanic guy, he can show images of his spanner, of his um, tires and other things that he gets to work with. So if you're a professional, you can make use of your laptop, you can make use of your notepad, you can make use of your pen. If you're a baker, you can make use of your pan and other things that tend to work with what you do. Another one is the business partner images or your team. So group photos of your team are very crucial. And if you have employees or if you have business partners, revealing the faces behind the brand establishes a sense of connection. Also, team or business partner images can be a great way because group photos of your team can be very valuable if you have employees or if you have business partners. Because sometimes when you go to somebody's website and then you see the photos of the people that are behind the brand let's say the ceo the marketing manager the employees the head of the it department you tend to feel connected with the website so revealing those faces can establish a sense of connection share photos of your staff alongside your brand because this can make customers or potential clients become acquainted with you and your team and these images also be a stress that introduces your entire team to your audience. So now, what should you pay attention to before the shoot? Now, before your branding shoot, there are a lot of things you need to consider. Number one, your brand identity. Ensure you have a clear understanding of your brand values, your mission, and your target audience. This will guide the visual elements of the shoot. So I recently had my personal branding shoots recently and it was a really lovely one. I posted the behind the scenes on my LinkedIn and my Instagram profile. Now, for me, when I wanted to do my shirt, I considered the brand identity. So what are my brand values? I value honesty, I value integrity, and I also value calmness. So all of these were really incorporated in my shirt. And my target audience, I had two categories of target audience. I wanted to read people that are interested in my podcast, so I did a photo that sort of looked like a podcast host. And then I also had the one of the corporate outfits that also resonated with the kind of target audience I was looking out for. Another thing that you should consider should be your brand color. 
using your brand color palette consistently in your props, in your clothing, in your background, and any other visual elements you have can reinforce brand recognition. So what do I mean? Now for my brand, Rayo Brand Academy and the DFY show, I have the color blue in the DFY show. For Rayo Brand Academy, I have a color that looks like pink, I have the white in it, and I also have purple. So what did I go for? I went for color white, which is my main photo that I use for my LinkedIn profile and also for other things that I do. So white is part of my color palette, so I decided to go with white. Imagine I went for a color yellow or for a color red. It's obviously off and my audience would not really understand because red and yellow are not part of my brand colors. So understanding your brand colors can help you. You'll need to know the colors that suits your props. For my cup, I made use of purple. For my notepad, I made use of pink. I also made use of blue for the podcast photos because blue was part of my brand colors. Another thing that you should consider should also be mood boards. Now creating mood boards can help you communicate the desired look and feel of the shirt. This also helps the photographer. It also helps you to understand where you're going to so that you don't get to the face of the shirt and you're wondering what is going to be my pose? What am I going to do next? And this mood board simply means having the kind of photos you want to replicate. And if you have something in your head already, it's also about you sketching it so that your photographer or whoever is taking your pictures can understand the kind of style that you want to do. Because to be honest, when you, if you think that you know the poses that you have in mind, you might get to the place of the shoots. And after taking like one to three different photos, you tend to get confused and you're like, what else am I going to do? And for you to have the best kind of mood boards, I would recommend Pinterest because there are a whole lot of photographers that do personal branding shoots. You can also check Instagram. You can also check Google for inspirational ideas. Another thing you should consider as well would be your props and your styling. Now, choosing props and styling that align with your brand personality and message should be very important and you should pay a lot of attention to these because these elements would enhance the story that you are conveying. What's your style? Are you someone that likes to be casual? Are you someone that likes your professional feel? For me, I like the professional feel. And when I first started, I started with gowns. But later on, I had my second photo shoot or my third photo shoot and it was a suit that I was wearing because I just wanted to display that expensive look. I wanted to display sophistication. So if you're maybe an IT guy that you do not like the old suit thing, you can just take photos that represent who you are on a daily basis. I know of people that tend to use their native words because that is how they represent themselves in real life. So choosing the best props, choosing the best style can really help your brand photographs and it can help you to rank very high when people are looking for people in your field. Another one you should consider is your location selection. Now you need to pick a location that complements your brand identity and your story. If you are a project manager, for example, you shouldn't be taking photos in a bob because it doesn't really define your brand. If you are someone that, let's say a baker, for example, you wouldn't be seen in a mechanics shop, would you? As a professional, you can take your photos in a cafe, you can use a hotel, you can use interesting places like a lobby or anywhere that you can find yourself working any day and any time. Another one that you should consider should be your wardrobe choices. Now, selecting clothing that reflects your brand and style is very important. You also need to coordinate the colors and the style to match your mood. So just like I mentioned earlier, your styling matters. The colors that you're wearing should really align with your brand colors so that you are not confusing your audience. As a lady, as a man, your hair and your makeup should also be very good. You should ensure that your hair and makeup choices also align with your personal brand. You should also contribute your overall look in a way that people can see you and be like, okay, this is the person that I want to work with. So if you're someone that probably keeps a natural hair, 
and you want to show your brand style, you can also take pictures with your natural eye if you want to, or if you have a wig on, you can have that. As a man, you should also have your beard neatly shaved and also your hair neatly cut as well so that you can overall have the best look and you can enjoy your photo shoot session. Another one is your poses and expression and how you tend to put yourself out there can determine whether people would buy from you or not. You need to plan your poses, you need to plan your expression, and you also need to convey the emotions that people will want to work with you with. Tools and props, you also need to pay attention to that. If you're someone that uses a lot of props to work, then this is the opportunity to show your tunes with people as well. Your lightning, your storytelling, your consistency, all of these matters. Talking about consistency, you need to maintain that visual look across different sites for people to know that this is you and you're not someone else. With that being said, what are the kind of props that you can use for the photo shoot? And the number one thing that you need to know is that the props that you're going to use for your photo shoot will depend on your brand identity, to depend on your message. It will also depend on the story that you're trying to convey. So number one thing that you can use for your props are product props. That's if you're showing a specific product or your service, you can include it. So for example, if you're a baker, you can use your baked goods or maybe your cakes or maybe your pan or any of your baking utensils. Another one can be your tools of your trade. You can use your books and your notebooks. That's books and notebooks are a bit different. So books can be... Maybe the books that you tend to read or your favorite authors and then notebooks can be like your notepad. You can also have your take gadgets that are like your laptop, your smartphones or your headphones that just shows that you are tech oriented. That is if your brand is related to that niche. Another one can be your workspace elements that you have to incorporate elements from your workspace, maybe your desk, your chair, your stationery, just to provide a glimpse into your daily work routine. You can also add branded items that includes maybe your t-shirt that has your logo or your brand name. You can also have branded items like your water bottle just to tell people who you are without having you to speak you can have your food and your beverages if your brand is related to food you can have decorative object like vases sculptures you can have decorative trays just to ensure that the photos you are taking have a little bit of pop aside from you being in the frame you can also add vintage or art items just to give that photo shoot a very interesting feel and you also need to remember that the key to selecting props depends on your brand story and your message. Now that we've considered the benefits and what you need to look out for when you're preparing for your shoots, let us talk about the different shots that you need to consider for the photo shoot. Because it can be a disaster when you spend so much time and effort and also money in taking photos. And then you realize that either the photographer or yourself they didn't do justice to the size of the images because we know that the sizes of images you use for your website can be different from your social media pages. So you can experiment with different cropping options like your horizontal shots that are great for website banners, your vertical shots that work well for your social media posts, your square crop photos that are perfect for patterns like Instagram or for LinkedIn. You also need to ensure that you take note of detailed shots. So close-up shots of your objects, specific objects or elements can have depth and intrigue to your visuals. So let's say you have your working utensils or your product that you like to showcase. Those kind of detailed shots, your notepad, your laptop, things that you use for your day-to-day -day working. Those kind of detailed shots are very good and are also very important. You can have wide shots. White shirts also provide a broader context and it also showcases your environment. You can have shots like action shots that captures yourself or your team in action. You can have candid moments that is candid shots that capture your genuine emotions, your interactions, that shows when you're laughing, that shows when you're on your system. Lifestyle shots as well that visualizes how your product or your services fit into people's everyday life. Another one that I think is also important would be your portrait shots. 
because those photo shots are also something that are interesting because you're looking directly into the camera, you're smiling, you're showing your personality and your expression. Another thing that you should also consider should be your workspace shots. Share images of your workspace, whether it's an office, a studio, or workshop. Share the behind the scenes shots, share things that are interesting for people to see. You can also take pictures with a colored background, colored background that works with your color palette, obviously. You can also take photos maybe with a neutral or white background. You can take interaction shots. You can just take a whole lot of images that just shows different personality and different feel of who you are. So how do you use this branding photos? Now we've explained all of these things. We've explained how you can take your photo shoot to the next level, but how then do you use these images? You can use these images on your website, your landing pages. You can use them on your social media. You can use them as your profile photos. You can use them for your blog post. You can use them for email marketing, your marketing collateral. You can use them for online advertising. You can use these images for product promotions, for presentation, for press releases, for your ebooks and your guides. You can use them for your print materials. You can use them for your online courses. You can use them for your podcast or video visuals. I made use of mine for my podcast. You can also use them on your email signatures and you can use them for your e-business card. Now, what's the conclusion? Now, we need to know that branding should serve as a powerful tool to visualize and communicate your brand identity, your visuals, and your story. Now, here are a few additional tips that you can keep in mind when planning a branding photo shoot. Number one, you ensure that you plan with purpose. Number two, you research and you also get inspiration. You collaborate with professional, collaborate with a photographer, collaborate with a stylist. Storytelling ensure that you create a story around the kind of photos that you're doing. Preparation is everything as well and also consistency. You also need to ensure that you meet a photographer that understands your brand need because people, if you just go to any kind of photographer who is not very good in personal branding images, you might not get the kind of shirt and the kind of um, feel that you're looking for. You also need to ensure that after the photos that you've taken, you need to ensure that you constantly review because you get older, you get to change, your look gets to change. So ensuring that you take regular photos as your brand grows, as also you grow, can help in this branding journey. And at Royal Brand Academy, we sit with you and we analyze all your branding goals and how you can create a sustainable brand online. Don't forget that you can visit royalbrandacademy.com to get started or send me a DM on LinkedIn and my LinkedIn handle is Damilola Felicia Badmos. Also, you can get a copy of my book, How LinkedIn Works on Amazon, and it is available both as a paperback and as an ebook. Finally, I ask that you kindly subscribe to this podcast, rate it, and leave reviews so more people can find this podcast. Thank you so much for listening and see you in the next episode.